Welcome to another exciting chapter of Planet Vehicle. I'm Alvin Jones. I'm standing right next to the 2015 BMW 328D as in diesel sport wagon with X-Drive, which is their all-wheel drive. This is the car we have to pile around in during the week, and we're going to report on it in a future edition. But today's edition, oh my goodness, we've got cars and we've got stars. We've got the top 10 picks from Consumer Reports. We've got the Mercedes-Benz GLA SUV. We also have Infiniti's Q. X70 SUV and and this is where the stars and cars part comes in we've got the Jaguar XE with Idris Alba driving it from London to Berlin and guess what it's all coming up next don't miss it keep it right here the planet vehicle Action. I love telling big stories about big heroes but at the end of the day real life is better than any story our servicemen and women are the real heroes. Every day, they make the sacrifices for their country, for my country, for my son's country. The USO gives us real ways to support our real heroes. There is a way we can say thanks. You can go to USO.org and make a real difference in their lives today. Do it. Consumer Reports, we've been doing this exclusive luncheon and announcement with them for several years, and it's definitely one of our favorite events of the year. So thanks to Consumer Reports for that and, and the honor of, of pairing up with you to do this. Um, we have Mark Recton, who is the team lead for car content for Consumer Reports. So let's, let's get a sense of what makes a top pick. Um, and in the, in the beginning, you have a sense of, you know, what, what vehicles do really well in our own road test analysis. And that means uh, not just the vehicles that, that perform well uh, in various aspects, but all around and against all the competitors too. Um, so there's three criteria. There's the road test itself. Uh, then there's also uh, the reliability data that we put in uh, that is based on 1.1 million responses, uh, or 1.1 million vehicles rather, uh, that involve uh, our subscribers, and the vehicles must have average or better reliability. Uh, and then there's also the safety aspect, which is measured by various government and insurance institute uh, safety groups, and uh, the vehicles must perform well in those as well. So let's start off. Um, you're going to see this, uh, this brand a lot. Um, Subaru has gone from being a, a niche brand that uh, quirky professors with elbow patches, uh, you know, that's it's their favorite ride. They have they have become the kind of car that is uh, so sufficiently mainstream that that it performs well in many many areas, and and exceeds the level of the established players. And in, in the case of the Impreza, building a small car is a really challenging act. Um, I remember interviewing uh, the head of Honda's Formula One program as he was promoted to run the Honda Civic platform. I said it must be really hard to to work well. Uh, on the Formula One, that the performance extremes are, are, are so high. And he said, it's easy compared to building the next Civic. So that gives you a sense of, of how difficult it is to build a proper small car to a price that meets everybody's consumer objectives. And in this case, the Subaru Impreza this year for us is our top pick. Um, it's, it's small on the outside, but large on the inside. Subaru has, has gotten this methodology down, um, which is particularly impressive when you're dealing with an all-wheel drive car, because then you're packaging uh, extra mechanical pieces in there. Um, and the, the fuel economy for an all-wheel drive car is very impressive. Uh, and they finally have uh, entered the modern era of infotainment systems. So yeah, they, they take top pick there. Same with Legacy. Uh, Usually the mid-sized car is something that you're going to pick up at the rental car counter. It's not, or if you own one, it's not something you get really revved up to, to get in and drive. Uh, but the Legacy kind of defies that. It's something that has a little bit extra pizzazz. It's got really strong ride quality. It's not too floaty. It's nice and responsive. Uh, and despite having all-wheel drive, which, ship, which typically uh, saps uh, fuel economy, uh, 26 miles per gallon in our testing is pretty impressive. Um, and actually, if we had a wagon category, then we would also have picked uh, the Outback uh, as the winner in that segment as well. And in fact, we did a social media experiment of the people's pick, and for the second consecutive year, the Outback won that as well. Now, we're just going to let this one sink in a sec. This is not a German-branded car. This is a Buick. Now, granted, it's based on an Opel. Uh, but this is something that, uh, I wouldn't say it shocked us, but we were, we were so impressed by the Buick that we felt that it made the world's finest sports sedan. And yeah, it's a front drive American car. Uh, this is something that is a, a line in the sand as far as 
you know, changing what people look at when they think of Buick. Um, not only is it a really strong value equation, uh, but this is a vehicle where you look at the powertrain and it's on par or better than some of the German brands. Uh, this is definitely an award that we're giving because of it is that outstanding. It's not, wow, they've made such a better Buick. It's beyond that. It is actually surpassing that of the Germans. That said, as far as the best luxury car goes, uh, for us, it's the feeling of, of the Audi A6 really represents uh, the current state of, of the ultimate luxury type of vehicle. It's the kind of modern expression that you have uh, for the people who love to, to spend their weekends in the Apple Store, who hang out at Design Within Reach. <laughs> it's got that sort of uh, uh, pragmatic luxury that sort of, uh, there's a lot of Bauhaus in it. The, the interior is beautifully laid out. The fit and finish is perfect. Um, you know, it's, it's functional without looking ostentatious. And I think that's uh, a really sort of uh, elegant way of putting luxury out there. Um, and even with all-wheel drive and, and all the equipment that comes with it, its fuel economy is impressive. Uh, this should be no surprise. For 12 straight years, we've put the Prius as the uh, best green car. And this is something that uh, is really impressive, considering that the vehicle really was last redesigned in 2004. Uh, this is something that, yes, it got a redesign uh, around 2009, 2010. But as far as the, the base mechanicals underneath it, it's still very much the same design. Uh, but it's, it's really impressive. It continues to impress. It's our default answer at cocktail parties. We've all been there. We're all in the industry. It's, hey, what kind of car should I get? It's just, just get a Prius. You know, it's bulletproof. It's going to run forever. It's going to get you great fuel economy. You never have to worry about it. And it's, it's, it's our default answer. It's, uh, it's taken what was initially a science project that was greeted with a lot of skepticism, and it has gone completely mainstream. And the folks at Toyota are saying, you know, they, they, fore they foresee a day when the Prius family will outsell the Camry. And at this rate, they may be onto something. And yes, more Subarus. Um, so this is our default answer when someone comes to a young couple. Says, well, we just had our first kid. What car do we get? And this is our default answer for that. Uh, you need room for stuff. The packaging is exquisitely done for a vehicle this small. Um, the value equation is really strong. The amount of things, the way they've, they've put together the options package and the pricing ladder um, is really strong. Um, the one negative against it is that its uh, infotainment system could be updated. It's a running change this year, uh, and, and yet despite that, it's still a top pick for us. Um, in terms of where you're looking at when you grow up, uh, the Toyota Highlander has done the almost unachievable task of taking minivan levels of functionality and packaging and put them into an SUV, which is a really fanta fantastic accomplishment. Um, and when you look at uh, how it drives out in the world, uh, I thought it was a, uh, personally, thought it was a, a rather gutsy move for them to put a double wishbone rear suspension in them. That really improves the handling of the car. Uh, and, and it's just, it's, it's solid overall. It's, it's, a, it's a safe pick, it's a good pick, it's a strong pick. <laughs> and it's something that, uh, that, that Toyota should be proud of. Um, now in terms of uh, minivans themselves, uh, the Honda Odyssey is, uh, is our top pick. And, I don't know how many of you were at the uh, the model uh, test, uh, or sorry, the, the media unveil at uh, in San Diego when they had everybody drive this vehicle around an autocross course. Well, that makes no sense at all. Why would you put a minivan out on an autocross course? Well, it became quickly apparent why, uh, because the Odyssey has handling capabilities that are far beyond that of uh, most of the rest of the class, um, and it's it's. It's one thing to show off the vehicle that way, uh, but, but the real world version of that is if, if you're driving down the road and you got a carload of kids and the 18 wheeler sheds, uh, you know, sheds its tire skin in front of you, you need to have a vehicle, large as it is, that can just very, very routinely just sort of avoid that impediment, that obstacle, and just continue on its way. And no one in the back will freak out because you handled it so smoothly. And this is, this is that kind of vehicle where despite its, its girth and its size, uh, the Odyssey is, is something that we are very impressed with its, its dynamic response. Um, here's another intriguing one. Uh, Chevrolet's Impala is something that we have felt has taken this segment over. Uh, this used to be something that was really dominated by the Japanese brands, but what we've seen from the Impala is 
uh, actually class above levels of luxury and quality in terms of the fit and finish, in terms of uh, how the, the vehicle rides. Usually large cars are uh, floaty and undulating and they don't really give a whole lot of responsiveness. The Impala defies that. Once again, GM looking to defy its own reputation. I mean, the Impala used to be the rental car that you would really just, really? I got, I got the Impala? Um, <laughs> Now you get in this new Impala, and it's, it's amazing the progress that they have made with this vehicle. Uh, one caveat, though, is that we only recommend the V6, the four-cylinder engine. Uh, the reliability of that, of that trim level uh, does not meet our average or above average reliability requirements. Uh, we can go into that uh, more detail offline afterwards if you want. Which brings us to our best overall top pick. And for two years in a row, it's the Tesla Model S. Now, it's not just because it's the best car that we've ever tested. Uh, it's something that they have thrown down the gauntlet of how amazingly true to its core principles that Elon Musk has made this car. That it's not just a high-tech sports car. You get inside and it feels like a luxury car. And it's not a science project. It feels like it was purpose-built for you. And they've done things with the infotainment that no other automaker has done. Um, it's it, the practicality of it and that you can actually fit seven people in it is, is awesome, really, it is. How they were able to accomplish this is, is startling in that electric cars have been put out there for decades and there have been promises made, oh yes, this time you're gonna get 140 miles out of it, you'll get 160 miles out of it, and they never measure up. And this is the first time that an electric car has been put out there where they make promises and that they are kept even under the most rigorous driving standards. Um, you know, personally, when I, when I tested it uh, in my previous capacity, um, I was told, yeah, you can make it from LA to Vegas with a quick stop in Barstow to recharge, which you would have had to do if you had a gas-powered car anyway. Um, and I really anticipated it not making the Conejo Pass. It's, it's a, about 10 miles of really steep incline, and it's a, it's a challenge for, for pretty much any car. And I just, I, it roared up that pass, and it hardly lost anything in terms of range. And I coasted in with plenty of range and reserve. And this is the first time that an electric car has really done that. Um, and yes, there have been some, uh, some blog posts and there have been some news stories about how the reliability of the Tesla, there have been some teething problems. Uh, but actually, in our own survey data, of which we have 5% of all Teslas on the road in terms of data responses, we have found that the Model S actually has uh, better reliability and predicted reliability than both the BMW 7 Series and the Mercedes-Benz <laughs> S-Class. So from that perspective, the Tesla is in line with the segment and is actually better. So those are our top picks. Action. I love telling big stories about big heroes, but at the end of the day, real life is better than any story. Our servicemen and women are the real heroes. Every day, they make the sacrifices for their country from my country, from my son's country. The USO gives us real ways to support our real heroes. There is a way we can say thanks. You can go to USO.org and make a real difference in their lives today. Do it. For 2015, the Mercedes-Benz GLA 254 Matic comes with a two liter engine inline four turbo. It's got direct injection, 16 valves, 208 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque, giving you on the highway 32 miles to the gallon, 24 city, and 27 combined. Now, we'll take a look at this. This thing runs on a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. It's got formatic all-wheel drive, versatile four-wheel independent suspension to uh, help cut down on the, the emissions. You got the Eco Start Stop system. You got shift paddles, I love those. The electromechanical power steering helps to keep it on the road. And to stop it, you've got the perforated front brakes with the painted calipers. Now on the inside, you've got the CD player with the MP3 capability. You got HD radio, Bluetooth hands-free interface, also a USB audio port. A navigation system, you've got an emergency communication system. Now you've got the power of moonroof on the outside, uh, power windows, cruise control, dual front zone AC, a remote keyless entry system, illuminated entry at night, you got memory seats to sit in, and a central controller. Also, the exterior, you got body colored power, heated side mirrors that manually fold 
like that. And they got turn signal indicators. Also, body colored rear bumper with uh, black rub strip, front and rear fog lamps, fully automatic aero composite halogen daytime running headlamps with the delay off. You got LED brake lights. You got perimeter approach lights, light tinted glass, power liftgate rear cargo access. And what I really like, the rain detecting variable intermittent wipers. So as the rain gets faster, the windshield wipers get fast and slows down when the wing slows down. Also, you got an emergency communication system. Now, you know, Mercedes-Benz is well known for its safety, the body structure of the GLA, and its safety features create a system of interconnected elements working together to help protect its occupants. Now, these features include things like, say, collision prevention assist plus, attention assist, 10-way airbag protection, Mercedes-Benz Embrace offers the industry's most comprehensive range of features for more connected, safe, and productive drive time. Now, you also get the advanced uh, tire pressure monitoring system. You've got adaptive braking technology, brake assist, and anti-lock braking system, electronic stability program, four-wheel electronic traction system, all of these things to make you safe. The warranty, basic, 48 months, 50,000 miles. The powertrain is the same, 48 months, 50,000 miles. Corrosion perforation, unlimited miles, unlimited distance. Roadside assistance, 48 months, 50,000 miles. Manufacturer suggested retail price, 33,330. The premium package is 2,300. That includes your dual zone automatic climate control, heated front seats, Harman Kardon Logic 7 sound system, your Sirius XM radio with six month all access trial. You got media interface, auto dimming rear view and side uh, driver's side mirrors, integrated compass, garage door opener. Now, for $2,480 is the multimedia package. That comes with your rear view camera, your advanced voice control, your 80 gig hard drive navigation and seven inch display. You get no charge for navigation map updates for three years. It also has Gracenote Media Database. That includes the album cover art. So as it's playing, you can take a look at the album uh, right in your dash. You got the SD card reader, a 10 gig music register, Sirius XM traffic and weather with three years of service. Now. This looks real sporty because it's got the sport package. It's got sport body styling. It's got 19-inch twin five-spoke AMG wheels, perforated front brakes with the painted calipers. On the inside, the interior package, $1,700. That's the leather upholstery, the sport front seats, the top stitch Mercedes-Benz Tech's upper dash trim, the infrared remote window open and closing. Now, you throw in your destination and your delivery, that's $925. Your total price is $42,000. $905. So there is a look at the GLA for 2015 with Mercedes-Benz for Planet Vehicle. I'm Alvin Jones. Uh, the day after tomorrow, I've got to go to Berlin to DJ at a Jaguar party for the launch of their new car called the XE. And actually, they're going to send one to me, so I'm going to drive it from here to Berlin. This is the National Youth Music Theatre. It's an amazing establishment where they bring young, talented people. I came here when I was about 18 years old and, um, and I come back every now and again. Were there times at the beginning where you thought about giving it all up and getting a normal job? No, I never thought about giving up, ever. I moved to America to start my career there and I didn't work for three whole years. Couldn't see myself doing anything else. I'm going to drive a new Jag to Berlin and um, just get up to mischief. I'm looking forward because it's got 11 speakers in it. That's a lot of speakers for two ears, isn't it? Nice, 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 nice. It's a bit of a way, isn't it? Folks, then, that's where I'm going. And there. Brilliant, there we go. London to Berlin, that's a long, long drive. Almost 750 miles. One of the features which is really useful, especially when you're driving across country, is that tells you that's the speed you're supposed to be going.
Jaguar said, listen, do you want to come down to Spa to test out the XE? And F1 legend, Mr. Martin Brundle, he's here. Martin! You made it. Hello. How are you? I'm good, mate. How are you? Good stuff, yeah. Whoa, what's going on here? Well, we've got the Mark II GT there, 1960. Oh, it's beautiful. And Look at that. Beautiful. And here we've got the new XE. This is the 3 litre V6, 340 horsepower. They've somehow shoehorned into there. Look, that is why it takes off like a scolded cat. Look at that. Well, look, is this the what's in the F type? Yeah. Is yeah. it fast, yeah? Yeah, yeah it takes off. Fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and this is how not to go through there by yeah. letting the back end slide. It feels really quick, but it's not quick at all. It's better to just keep the power gently on. You need some shock absorbers in the old elbows so that you've got a nice, sweeping, you know, fluid move going on. And then I did it a few times, which was amazing. Right, so this car is like the big boy car. Pretty exciting! Oh. For people that like to drive the F-Type version, you're going to have a great time driving. It's a driver's car. That was a lot of fun. This car is... It's the last stage of my journey. This is the most efficient Jaguar ever. Over the last 750 miles, it's done 65 miles to the gallon. And that is amazing. I'm DJing tonight and I'm pressed for time. And one of the convenient things about the car is I can set my playlist up while I'm driving. I can pick a song, put it into a playlist, so I can sort of browse in and figure out what I'm going to play later. I'm pretty excited about getting into the club tonight. Finally made it. It was a really good party. I DJ'd, had fun. I've done my road trip. I liked the car. It was amazing. <laughs>
heated seats in the front, 10-way power driver's seat, including two-way lumbar support. And the passenger seat, it's eight-way power, and it reclines a little bit. You got your seats in the back. Well, they fold, they recline 60-40, and there's a remote fold-down release in the cargo area, so if you want to put those seats down and put some more things in it. You got leather-wrapped steering wheel and shift knob. It also has the black lacquer and trim. It comes standard with 18-inch alloy wheels. You got the high-intensity discharge headlights, integrated front fog lights, LED rear brake lights, and center-mounted stop light. Power sliding tinted glass moonroof with one-touch auto open-close tilt feature and sliding shade. Power rear lift gate, electronic lift gate closure assist, integrated rear spoiler, UV reducing solar glass, rear privacy glass, power folding, heated outside mirrors with courtesy lights, there's also speed sensitive flat blade windshield wipers. You've got your rear window intermittent wiper and defroster with timer, dual exhaust with polished tips and side air vents, like right here. Infinity has the advanced safety airbag system, which includes a dual stage front supplemental airbags with seat belt sensors and occupant detection sensor, which adjusts their inflation rate depending on crash severity, seat occupancy, and seat belt usage. Now say if the front passenger seat is empty, a sensor will deactivate the airbag on the passenger side. Now you got driver and front passenger side impact supplemental airbags, roof mounted curtain side airbags with front seat active head restraints. You got electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, four wheel anti-lock braking system, vehicle dynamic control, traction control system, and let's take a look at the warranty. Four years, 60,000 miles, that's bumper to bumper. Six years, 70,000 miles for the powertrain and roadside assistance. Six years, no matter how much mileage you put on the car, and they give you a free loaner. So you're wondering what the price is. Well, for this 2015, it's 47,300. The premium package comes in at 4,300. That includes Infinity Navigation System, Infinity Voice Recognition, Nav Traffic with real-time traffic information, nav weather for real-time weather and three-day forecast. You've got the famous Infinity Around View Monitor with moving object detection and front and rear sonar system, the single CD DVD player, streaming audio with Bluetooth, dual occupant memory seating, outside mirror with reverse tilt down feature, power tilt and telescopic steering column. Then you also have your entry and exit assist for the driver's seat and steering column, aluminum roof wells. The technology package, well, that's 2,950. That's intelligent cruise control. You also have the lane departure warning and lane departure prevention system. You got distance control assist, intelligent brake assist with forward collision warning. You've got your front pre-crash seat belts, rain sensing front windshield wipers, adaptive front lighting system with high intensity discharge, Xeon auto leveling headlights. Then there's also the deluxe touring package, that's $3,300. 20 inch alloy wheels, maple interior accents, aluminum pedals, rear cargo cover, quilted, leather appointed seats, climate controlled front seats. And for $3,550 it's the sports package, that comes with the adaptive front lighting system. Also, it comes with solid magnesium paddle shifters. You know I like paddle shifters. It's got the contrast stitch, sports style front seats with thigh support, contrast stitch, rear seats, uh, and then contrast interior stitch. And of course, in purple and black, like Planet Vehicle, dark headliner and pillars, climate control front seats, aluminum pedals, driver's seat with power booster adjustment, which is four way. So there it is, a look at the new 2015 Infiniti QX70, 3.7 liter all-wheel drive. For Planet Vehicle, I'm Alvin Jones.